So it's finally time to talk about the MOSFET. The MOSFET is the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. It's formed of a MOS capacitor, which we have been looking at so far. So this is the gate, which is formed of metal or polysilicon, and this is the oxide. This is the P-type substrate or body. And then we add two more terminals to make a MOSFET out of a MOS capacitor. These terminals are formed of heavy doped N plus regions. And there's full symmetry, full lateral symmetry here because the uh, two N plus regions are exactly identical. This is different from the bipolar junction transistor where the emitter and the collector were different. We call one of these terminals the drain and uh, D stands for drain. We call the other the source S stands for source and the top terminal of the capacitor is called the gate. The bottom terminal is called the body. Now, um, the drain and the source form PN junctions with the body. And for proper operation of the MOSFET, these PN junctions have to be always reversed. So the body should be connected to the lowest potential in the circuit, which is usually ground. Now, the distance between the source and the drain is called L for length, specifically channel length. The dimension in the depth of the drawing is called W for width, again, width of the channel. The thickness of the oxide is called T oxide. The transistor action of the MOSFET is as follows. When a potential at the gate less than V threshold is applied, there is no channel. And therefore, between the source and the drain, we see two reverse biased PN junctions and no current can flow. If a potential on the gate of higher than V threshold is applied, we form an inversion layer below the oxide. This inversion layer is called the channel. Any potential applied between the drain and the source in this case is going to cause the flow of electrons and therefore we can conduct current. The circuit symbol of the MOSFET is usually drawn like this. Notice that the MOSFET is a four terminal device with the four terminals being the gate the body, the source, and the drain. Because the body is usually connected to a constant low voltage, we do not draw it because it does not participate actively in charge conduction. We have three terminals, the drain, the source, and the gate. The drain and the source are distinguished by the connections in the circuit, where in this case, the drain will always be the higher potential. This means that during circuit operation, the role of drain and source can and will switch sometimes. This kind of, of MOSFET is called a, an NMOS, where N stands for the fact that the charge carriers that will allow current to flow between the drain and the source will be electrons. So again, when a gate potential lower than V threshold is applied, no current can flow between the drain and the source. When a gate potential above the threshold is applied, we form an electron layer between the drain and the source, which is the inversion layer of the MOS capacitor. In this case, we call it the channel. And therefore, between the drain and the source, we have a continuous uh, range of n-type silicon, which allows conduction. And so the MOSFET can actually act like a switch, where conduction between two terminals, the drain and the source, is uh, is controlled by third terminal, the gate. In other words, the resistance between the drain and the source is modulated by third terminal, which is the gate. This is a trans-resistor action, which is a transistor action. Now we want to find the value of current that flows between I drain, uh, between the drain and the source. And so we have to start thinking about um, charges in the channel and how these charges move. Uh, we consider the source to be the lower uh, potential, so uh, the source is lower than the drain. And so if VGS, the potential between the gate and the source, is less than V threshold, then that means by necessity that also VGD, the potential between the gate and the drain, is less than V threshold, which means that at no point below the oxide is there enough potential to form a depletion region. We say that the transistor in this case is cut off and the current between the drain and the source will be zero because between the drain and the source we only see two reverse biased PN junctions. If, however, VGS is greater than V threshold, 
then we do have a channel, we do have an inversion layer below the oxide. This inversion layer means that we will form electron charge between the drain and the source. And therefore, between the drain and the source, we have electrons. And if we apply an electric field between the drain and the source, by applying a potential VDS, this will cause a lateral electric field from the drain to the source, which will cause electrons to move from the source to the drain, which will cause a current to flow from the drain to the source. And so the drain is the higher potential and current will flow from the drain to the source, which is counterintuitive because current should flow from a source to a drain until we realize that what we are talking about here is charge carriers. The charge carriers are electrons and they flow from the source to the drain. What is the expression for this current IDS? To find the expression of this current, we have to first find the inversion charge below the oxide. We had uh, an expression for inversion charge, which is equal to minus C oxide into VGB minus V threshold. Now we have to uh, remove the body uh, terminal from our equation because um, we don't see it anymore. We see the source and the drain. And so Q inversion is going to be minus C oxide into VGS minus V threshold. This is the charge concentration at the source end of the channel. At the drain end of the channel, we instead have to use VGD instead of VGS. But at any point, at any random point in the middle, we can say that Q inversion is equal to minus C oxide into VGS minus VCS minus V threshold, where VCS is the potential between the point C in the middle and S. This is because VGC is equal to VGS minus VCS. So this is the amount of charge uh, at any point in the channel. Current is going to be equal to uh, Q inversion times width times the uh, velocity, the drift velocity of the electrons. To understand why, uh, refer to the, um, to the uh, drift current videos. Now, drift velocity is related to electric field through mobility, and it's going to be equal to minus mu n times the electric field. The electric field in this case is a function of the point in the channel at which we are, and the electric field is equal to minus dv by dx, in this case, we are talking about dVCS. So if we substitute, we end up with I is equal to minus C oxide into VGS minus VCS minus V threshold into W mu N dVCS by dx. We can get rid of the sign if we are aware that this current is going to flow between the drain and the source and that the sign is only telling us about the right or correct direction of current. So this is a differential equation. We can solve it to obtain an expression for I by doing one of two things, either finding an expression for VCS and differentiating it, which is really hard, or integrating. And so we're going to integrate IDS, DX, and on the other side, C oxide, W mu N, integration of VGS, minus VCS, minus V threshold, dVCS. We have to figure out the limits of integration. We are going to integrate from the beginning of the channel to the end of the channel, so from S to D. At S, we have Vs. At D, we have Vd. Or at S, we have Vgs is equal to um, 0, and at D, we have Vgs, we have uh, Vgd. Now, we are also integrating with distance from 0 to L. Now, the current ID is a constant, and so when we integrate, we get IDS times L. Why is current a constant? Because in steady state, current flowing anywhere in the channel has to be equal. Otherwise, there will be accumulation of charge at some point. This comes from the current continuity equation. We do not have any annihilation or generation of charges within the channel, and so current going in has to be equal to current coming out. On the other side, if we integrate, we obtain C oxide W mu N is equal to uh, into VGS minus V threshold into VDS minus VDS squared over 2. This gives us an expression for the drain to source current equal to mu n C oxide W over L into VGS minus V threshold into VDS 
minus VDS squared over 2. Now, if we draw this current voltage equation, it's going to give us this parabola. Let's uh, write the current equation again. It's equal to mu n C oxide into W over L into VGS minus V threshold VDS. Now, this is the kind of equation we would have expected to see if we had a linear resistance between the source and the drain. This would have allowed us to obtain an expression for VDS divided by IDS equal to a constant number, which is the resistance between drain and source. This would have led to an IDS versus VDS graph, which is linear. However, we have this term, minus VDS squared over 2, which introduces nonlinearity. Uh, we call a transistor in this mode an ohmic transistor, or sometimes we call this mode a triode mode, or the resistive mode, or the um, uh, ohmic mode. So we have to look at the current equation and figure out why each element here affects current. So more C oxide leads to more current because more C oxide leads to more coupling of mobile charges below the oxide. W over L is called the aspect ratio of the channel. It expresses how wide the channel is versus how long it is. And more aspect ratio means more current, and that makes sense, because if you look at the channel, it's basically a resistance. If the resistance is longer, then it has less current, because its value of resistance is higher. If we have a wider conductive surface, then we have less resistance and we have more current. VGS minus V threshold as a bracket when multiplied by C oxide is the voltage that couples charges to the bottom of the oxide. So more VGS minus V threshold means more charges in the channel. Now, but why does VDS increase current? And does it increase current? We see that it does increase current for this parabola at least up to a certain point. And the reason VDS increases current is because VDS introduces more uh, horizontal field which leads to charges moving faster. If we look at the fundamental equation of current, it's equal to velocity multiplied by uh, current by charge density. So there are two ways to increase current, increasing charge density or increasing uh, velocity. VDS increases velocity, VGS minus V threshold, W over L and C oxide increase uh, charge density and mu n increases velocity. So we have to keep in mind that charge is equal, that current is equal to the product of two things, charge density and the velocity at which this charge is moving.